Good morning. I'm Joe Abe Goolsby. Welcome to our time of uh, devotional on this Monday morning. It's good to be with you here. Let me lift up a, a few people that I know that we need to remember in our prayers as we go forward. Uh, Catherine Mayer is still hospitalized in Dallas, but is improving. Sherry Collins has her new knee that she's been working to get for quite some time now. Sherry is at home and is improving daily, and we are grateful for that. We want to remember Francis and Gil Nelson. Francis's son, Michael McClellan, passed away Sunday uh, in Dallas, and we want to uh, keep Francis and Gil in our prayers as they go through this uh, struggle with the great loss that, uh, that they are facing and just continue to love them uh, through their struggle. We also want to lift up uh, all of those continually who, uh, who are struggling with the COVID-19 pandemic and all that that relates to, and then the racial strife that uh, permeates our nation. Uh, I hope that everyone will continue to be in prayer uh, for that struggle as we seek to get things right, as we seek, seek to make things work as they ought to work, as God would have them work, uh, as God's children. Let me share with you a story this morning that I read recently and it just, uh, it just, it, it, it sounds good. It sounds like one of those things that we all need to hear and respond to, uh, particularly in all that's going on around us today. The story is about New York City back in the 1930s when Fiorella LaGuardia was mayor of New York during the Great Depression, during World War II. The story is that he was a colorful character who rode around on New York City fire trucks. He uh, went with the police as they raided speakeasies in the city. He'd call and take an entire orphanage to a baseball game. And even when the New York newspapers would go on strike, He'd go on radio and read the sunny Sunday funnies to the kids. One bitterly cold night in January of 1935, he turned up at the night court that served the poorest ward in the city. He gave the judge the night off and took over the bench himself. Within a few minutes, a tattered old woman was brought before him charged with stealing a loaf of bread. She told the judge that her daughter was deathly sick and that her two grandchildren were hungry. But the shopkeeper from whom the bread was stolen refused to drop the charge as he said, Your Honor, it's a bad neighborhood. She's got to be punished to teach others around here a lesson. LaGuardia turned to the woman and said, I've got to punish you. The law makes no exception." $10 or 10 days in jail. But even as the mayor was pronouncing sentence, he was reaching into his own pocket. He pulled out a $10 bill, laid it down on the bench and said, here's the $10 fine, which I now remit. And furthermore, I'm going to fine everyone in this courtroom 50 cents for living in a town where a person has to steal bread so that her grandchildren can eat. Mr. Bailey, collect the fines and give them to the defendant. So the following day, the New York City newspapers reported that $47.50 was turned over to the bewildered little old lady who'd stolen the bread to feed her starving grandchildren. Some 70 petty criminals, people paying traffic tickets, and New York City policemen paid the 50 cents for the privilege of doing so and then proceeded to give the mayor a standing ovation. For living in a town where someone has to steal bread to feed their starving family. Wow, what an indictment for all of us who never really make anything happen to make our city or our nation a better place to be. So in these unprecedented times, let's make our world a better place in which to live by doing what we can to make it happen. Would you bow with me as we pray? 
Loving God, our world, our nation, even our community is filled with people who have to steal to feed their family. And even if it is just a figurative thing, it is real. There are people here who have needs that we don't even know about. There are people here in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic that may have a roof over their head and may have money to buy food, but they need to feel the presence of their friends, their family. They need to know that others care about them and love them. And those things are something that each of us can do. So encourage us, oh God. Push us a little bit if that's what needs to be. So that people in our world can feel your spirit and your love and feel that everyone deserves and can live a life of fullness before them. We'll ask this prayer, O oh God, in your name. Amen. Amen.